Hi, my name is Jenna Saylor, and this is my Physics Lab 4 on oscillations. Purpose of the lab. To compare the predicted motion and the observed motion of the mass in both the x and y direction. To plot the energy changes, which are kinetic gravitational potential, spring potential, and total, that are computed in the model. To answer whether or not the energy principle is satisfied in the model system. And to use the data obtained in Tracker to make two separate estimates of oscillation periods and then further compare them. Preview. The system was the spring, the mass, and the earth, and nothing was in the surroundings. The initial conditions were an initial velocity of zero, an initial position of negative 0.112 meters in the x direction and negative 0.116 meters in the y direction, and finally an initial spring length of 0.123 meters. And for the results, the y motion was very similar in both the experimental and computer model while the x motion varied in length. Some important concepts to understand are Newton's second law, which states that the net force is equal to change in momentum over change in time. This applies to our spring system because as the spring oscillates and changes direction, the momentum is changing. Another important concept to know is period of oscillation, which is T or period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the mass of the object over the spring constant. And the period also means the time it takes for the spring to complete one full cycle. The next concept is the force of spring, which is spring force is equal to negative k, or the spring constant, times the amount of extension or displacement in the spring. And then finally, the energy principle, which states that total energy, or total change in energy, is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational energy plus change in spring. And as you can see below, kinetic is equal to 1 half mv squared, gravitational is mg change in height, and then finally spring is 1 half ks squared computer model. As you can see in the highlighted portions, this was the code that was edited in order to make it more accurate towards my model. The mass was 0 0.402 kilograms. The initial position was negative 0.112 meters, negative 0.116 meters, and then zero. The velocity is zero because it wasn't moving. Down here is the spring constant, that is is 6.83, and the initial length is 0.123. Then down here we just have some update formulas. Down here, kinetic, gravitational spring, and then total energy formulas that we went over earlier. Um, on the right side, that's just the total time it took for the system to stop moving. Down here are more formulas, position updates, and after running the computer model, the following graphs were produced. In the first one right here, change in energy versus time, you can see that total energy was zero because as we mentioned previously, all the total energy cancels out, so the system is zero. Um, right here you can see kinetic energy is the smallest, while gravitational and spring are the largest, and they are pretty much the same magnitudes, but they are at their peak at different times. Um, on the right, you can see our p x position versus time, and it's pretty similar oscillation-wise, like period-wise, but the magnitudes are also a little different, and that could be partially due to computing error, also error in the video tracker. And then finally, we have y position versus time. And once again, this was an error with the experimental model, not computer. But as you can see, that our y positions have very similar shapes, very similar periods, very similar magnitudes. What does it mean? Is the energy principle satisfied? According to the energy principle, the total energy is change in energy plus change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational potential energy and change in spring energy. As you can see by the graph, and as I mentioned previously, the total energy, which is signified by the orange line, is equal to zero, meaning the principle is satisfied in that the energies cancel themselves out, also meaning energy is conserved. And now for the oscillation estimates, you could either use the formula T equals 2 pi times the square root of mass over the spring constant, or you could also just take a look at the graphs. And you do that by looking at the distance from a peak to a peak or a bottom to a bottom, because once again, a period is just a full cycle. For X, we got time is equal to 1.425 seconds. And then for the Y, we got time is equal to 1.614 seconds. However, if the experiment were to be done in perfect conditions and my experimental model is similar to the computer model, the x time and the y time should have been very similar, if not the same, because once again, it's a single point moving together, so if it's moving together, the periods are going to be the same. Errors. As previously mentioned, my limited knowledge of coding has restricted the accuracy of the experiment. Um, another error could have been the plotting of center mass on the tracker. You have to shift and click the different points, and sometimes your hand can shake a little, and it's not the true, true center of the object, so a much more precise method of doing that would lead to more accurate results. 
And then finally, instead of calculating the period by looking at the graph, you could find the actual mathematical quantities and plug it in the formula. Thank you.